so nice to be back home with you guys. I miss being here every week. I miss you. It's, I've attended the Raleigh Friends meeting a couple times. They have a really nice setup with, it might be the Google Home technology. I'm not sure the technology that they use, but they, um, it has a really awesome camera that will tilt and zoom in automatically, and they have microphones throughout the room where people are able to chime in throughout worship. But it's also nice having just a straight through recorded. I really enjoyed. I feel just as much a part, even though it's not live, I feel just as much a part of it with you guys being able to watch. Can y'all hear me okay? It's my mask. Cool. Take it off if you want to. I don't think I'll need to. I don't want to spread the love in that way. <laughs> but the scripture for today, I picked the 19th Psalm. It's uh, a Psalm of creation. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours our speech and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of heavens, and its circuits to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden in the heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, endearing forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the comb. Moreover, by them is your, ser is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can, who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This psalm was nice. I think C.S. Lewis claimed it was the best of all of them, one of the best lyrics in the world. And it almost, I can relate to David there. He sets up in the first seven or eight verses just the true power of creation how we can experience it directly i know it usually happens to me when i'm out in nature we'll take walks get the stream going you get your emotions become synergized you're not sure if you're breathing in or out the light just overtakes you and you're experiencing the day of the lord i have it in silent worship with all of you as well and then he goes in throughout the rest of it, almost reminding himself of all the rules he has to, the discipline that's required. It's easy to see it when you're out and you're not thinking, but once your mind starts working again, you go about your day-to-day -day life, it's harder. It's almost like you're, we deceive ourselves, I suppose. So he gives himself all of these reminders of the beauty of the Lord and his creation. And then there at the end, let me get my notes out here. That's not it. There we are. For a while now, our testimony of stewardship has been on my mind, especially as I've been away and had to, we're always in charge of our own, I guess, spirituality, for lack of a better word, but it's a lot easier when I was here every Tuesday, we'd have our Bible studies, I was here every Sunday, it was, it was easier to stay on the path because I know I was always around, 
And not that I don't have friends. I enjoy being out in Raleigh, but it's not quite the same as being home with y'all. So I've had to stay in that guard. But I've been able to, the job I have right now, I'm able to listen to a lot of audiobooks or speak to my wife on the phone as I walk around about eight hours at night. And a couple of weeks ago, I purchased the ESV version of the Bible. It's where I was able to listen to it. And I started going through the New Testament. And, you know, it was easy to get through the Gospels, and then you hit Paul. And it's just a <laughs> monotone. It's just a very, he dominates there for a while. So I think I made it through to the end of 2 Corinthians. I was like, all right, I got to go listen to John and Peter and all that for a while. So I broke it up. And I think all I have left is Hebrews and Revelations. And it's been, I'm not sure how I feel about Paul. He has some wonderful passages about putting on the full armor of God and how spreading the love to the Gentiles is what it was all about. But then you get into the misogyny and you can kind of see where some of the letters were probably written by other people, but it's, we just, it's easier to attribute them to a powerful person such as Paul. So I guess that's where a lot of those came from. But then I got into remembering... I've been climbing the mountain of Fox's journals for a while now. But just like climbing a mountain, you see the worth in the task as you're taking part of it. And he speaks of, you have the glorious day of the Lord, but you also have the dreadful power of the Lord that'll wash over you sometimes and just leave you completely, I guess, in awe, for a lack of a better word. It's not a depressing, it's not a negative type of revelation, but it's a very heavy type of revelation. And I don't remember what passage I was listening to that day, but I got home from work and Hannah was already asleep. It's probably three o'clock in the morning, a little rain coming down. So I just sat in the truck and I was reflecting on what I've been listening to that day. And I guess what George speaks of is the dreadful power of the Lord washed over me. And I was just thinking about, David mentioned the conflict in Ukraine, but we also have the conflicts in Somalia. We have a genocide we've basically been paying for for years in Yemen that those just don't dominate the narrative anymore. All of a sudden, our fellow Westerners in Ukraine are in trouble, and we all jump to their aid. It's on every website, but we don't speak of the atrocities our money goes towards on a daily basis. So I got to thinking about what does it mean in our global society? Being a good neighbor is important to us as Quakers, traditionally a Christian faith. What does it mean to be a good neighbor in this global society where we spend our money and we don't necessarily see where it goes. We pray it's going to good and it's helping people's heart, but oh, it's just, it's hard to fathom sometimes the destruction that we cause. But, you know, I've always been unhappy with my country and some of the money we spent money and some of the direction that we've been going. But as I've been out in Raleigh and I've been more alone and I've had to hang out with myself more. I've come to realize a lot of my perceptions to the world is really a reflection of how I'm feeling about myself. How have I been taking care of myself? What am I putting into my brain by these articles I'm reading? What foods am I eating? And that's really what had the concept of stewardship on my heart. Because our body is a temple as the scripture teaches us. So if I'm sitting here just shoving a bunch of junk in here, listening to a bunch of junk, reading all this negativity, of course, what's going to come out of my mind is just a bunch of stuff I don't want to hear. So I've been really working on purifying my body and purifying my mind. I honestly, I don't think, I can't remember the last time I've cut on a cable news station. I guess that's a good thing with all the advertisements. But now just about everything, YouTube, Google, you have to pay $20 a month to avoid the advertisements. But it, it's been... <sighs> So each day we wake up, we have a chance to renew creation. We're a part of creation. So we have that awe-inspiring moment of, that's why I really enjoyed the first, I know traditionally the Battle Hymn of the Republic, you wouldn't sing at a Quaker meeting, but each verse is revitalizing. It's, I know the first one, mine, mine eyes have seen the glory. And then the second verse, they're speaking of building an altar while they're out there in the middle of the night. They don't have anywhere to worship. They just probably got up a little mound of clay and built a stick, put it right there. But we have that temple inside of us. We carry it with us wherever we go. And that's what I've been 
And the gospel is an everlasting message. It's the truth that comes from God. If we can, it, it pours out through us. It pours out around us. I know this morning we had the birds. They gave more vocal ministry than any of us during our own program meeting. And it just, it resonates in my soul. But to go back to feeling the dreadful power of the Lord. So I spoke on how I've been struggling with figuring out how to be a good neighbor in this global society. And also, when we're praying, we see the beauty of existence. That's why we're struggling to keep it. But are we really, are we praying for our brother's sins and hoping that they will reconcile? Or are we just praying for, mm. I guess, peace? It's, we, we're peaceful, we're nonviolent, but that doesn't necessarily mean we can't be combative. We're here, we are the arm, the glory of God are in person. And we have a lot of negativity in the way of our hearts and others' hearts. So, can we heed his call or can I heed his call? Will I be able to be that vessel for the light? May our thirst be unquenchable. May our joy become infectious. Proverbs 6 says, The commandments is a lamp and the teaching is a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. So we're here to spread that life. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of the Lord of the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, my rock and my redeemer.